Hello there. It is time. It's time. I'm excited. I know you're excited. We are beginning the conversation called A Letter to the Church. And it is my testimony as a little Jewish girl from Brooklyn who walked 48 years in Judaism with the Lord and came to Christ seven years ago this August. So this is a very celebratory month and I think I started celebrating around my birthday because like that's when all the dancing and all the, I don't know, just stuff just started being like, it's a party, it's a party in my world. That is the joy of the Lord. It bubbles up, my Holy, the Holy Spirit in me is bubbling all the time. Sometimes you'll see me like I'm just moving, like I rock. That happens a lot when I'm in service. Um, like I'll rock and I literally cannot be still because of the bubbling of the Holy Spirit in me. I've been like that since I was four and I love music and I love dancing and I love worship and I love his presence. So the letter to the church is going to deliver the truth about my experience walking in Jesus cultures, that's what I call them, walking in Jesus cultures as I walked out the fullness of what Jesus needed to reveal to me about who he is in this whole scheme called my life as a Jewish girl and then 48 she's like I'm following Jesus and I have to share with you my roots so you understand where I'm coming from um, in my walk with the church called the body of Christ. I am so grateful, like seriously grateful to have been chosen to walk this walk. It has not been easy. In fact, when I was four years old, I began to speak to the Holy Spirit. And as a child, people used to say to me, oh my God, the Ruach HaKodesh on her is so beautiful, yada, 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 that's nice. The enemy smelled it too, though. So at seven years old, I was in a house fire. And in that house fire, I was able to demonstrate God and experience God so that this thing called this fire that was supposed to devastate me and devastate my life was not going to happen. Not the way the enemy planned it. So I remember at four years old, I used to watch Yogi Bear. I loved Yogi Bear. I loved Felix the Cat. I loved uh, Magilla Gorilla. I loved, those were my friends. Those were my people. And I remembered at four years old asking the Lord, if he would make me smarter than the average bear because I didn't feel like grown-ups were safe. I'm telling you what I prayed when I was four. How could I be aware that adults are not safe at four? The Holy Spirit. So my life began saturated in prayer and praise and worship and the study of the word of God. So little Jewish girls, like when we're five and we're in kindergarten, we're already, boys too, I'm not, I mean, I don't even know why I just said girls, but because I often find myself uh, having to explain as a woman how I can reside in these things that sound like, I guess, old school to people, but they're not old school, they're God school and still be a strong, bold force for the kingdom and stand wherever I have to stand, baby. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care what size Goliath you think you are. I don't care what gender y'all are. If the Lord sent me to say something to you, I'm going to say it. Trust that. Right. So this 
molding and growing of me was to have me surrounded, saturated, encapsulated with praise and worship. To go to school at 7.30 in the morning and as a five-year-old, the entire school was in corporate worship for the first hour of the day. And five-year-olds learned Zemirot. We learned the songs that are about worshiping God. And that's how we start. We start in song, and then by the first grade, we receive our first Sidur, emblazoned with our Hebrew name on it in gold. It's like the most gorgeous thing, and it's a whole ceremony, and it's a process. This is in the first grade. This is the level of like, oh my gosh, we love God. Like, what do you have to say today, God? What are we doing? What are we doing? That's the life I was cultivated in. Right. So, of course, I was dangerous. And at seven years old, I was in a house fire. The enemy knew. He smelled my, he smelled the baby. He was like, well, let me see what I could do about this situation. Seven years old, my house caught on fire. And my parents, because of the way Jewish community operates, it is normal for your parents to be closing up the shops while the kids are in bed. It is normal behavior for children to obey their parents and such. Don't do anything that your parents didn't tell you to do. Stay where they said stay. Right. There's that thing. Now, you know, one of two Fruit Loops is going to get out the box. It's fine. But generally speaking, generally speaking, I was cultivated in a spirit of obedience to both my parents, to the Lord's whisper, and to the command to praise in every circumstance. That's how I was cultivated from Yehad. So when that fire came, I had a choice. I was seven years old. Listen, you look around you right now. See if you can spot you a seven-year-old. Look at them. Look how they act and be like, okay, now I'm picturing this little girl. She's seven, and this is a thing that's happening in her world. Her house is on fire. And I'm looking, and I'm like, okay, let me assess. I'm seven years old, y'all. My father was military-minded, and that's how he groomed us. And the word of God speaks military talk all the time. That's how I was groomed, baby. Yeah, yeah, that's how I was groomed. So I assess, I call out to my parents. No adults are in the house, so now I know I'm on my own, unless there's people that's awake. Go back to wake up my brothers and sisters, see who can help. Everybody's knocked out from the smoke except for me. See, that's God. That made no sense. Fine. Now I've assessed there's no adults. Now I've assessed that I don't have backup. Now I'm like, okay, what do we got? We got fire, we got smoke, we got baby. Crap, we got baby. There's a baby in the kitchen. Seven-year-old self says, okay, baby has to breathe. Let's roll baby over to window. Tuck him in, wrap him up so nothing gets at him. Open window. See, I said I was seven. I said I was seven. So my seven-year-old self, see, this is the flesh suit. You see what I'm saying? I'm still a flesh suit seven-year-old child using flesh suit knowledge. However, the Holy Spirit is involved in this, looking out for me the whole way, looking out for everybody the whole way. And I look out the window as I open the window and I think to myself, yo, I'm seven years old, skinny as a toothpick. Yo, real talk, I used to have to wear rubber bands on my socks. Yo, my legs are still mad skinny, but whatever. Um. <laughs> So I used to wear rubber bands on my socks, but when I looked out the window to open that, I said, yo, I can make that. It was a four lane highway to cross to get to my parents. See, in Jewish culture, in Jewish community, we all know that it's take care of your home, take care of the businesses in your community, take care of the other people who own businesses in your community. And so it was normal behavior for them to be out at 11 o'clock at night, cleaning up shop, whatever, whatever, whatever. Cool. I thought I said I could make it. And then I remembered something my father said. And I had gone to the door because I could have left. But God said, see, I could trust her. I could use her. Because I remember what my father said. My father said, Zephaniah, never, ever, ever, ever 
leave your brothers and sisters behind. Ever. And yo, I was like, I won't be going anywhere. What else can I do? And so I had my whole plan. Like, this was my seven-year-old plan. I'm going to just keep pouring water on the fire until a grown-up comes. That was the whole plan. And I'll tell you something. My walk, as a result of that choice, these are the feet I'm dealing with. Yeah, I'm bringing it to you 100%, folks. That's the good foot, too. See, this one, I stay wearing bandages, having ulcers and breakdowns and whatever. So everything you've ever seen me doing, 14 years plus on Facebook, Remember that that's a situation I walk with every day. But God, do you see how my life doesn't look anything like what is happening in it at the time? Because of God. So let's go to the church and let's start with the first chapter called transparency. Transparency happens when your flesh suit wants to do something that the word of God says is not acceptable behavior and you decide that the word of God trumps I think I feel I want that's how you demonstrate love to God he said if you love me you will obey me I don't make this stuff up but I do recognize Walking in transparency with the Lord from day one means you will be honest with yourself, honest with him about what he said to you about yourself. You will turn, handle your business. So from the time I was four, I was cultivated to honor God, to praise God, to trust God, to believe God. And when I came to be 12, which is the age you're responsible for your relationship with God, we had a talk. And see, I know in my culture, these things called bat mitzvahs is a gross, disgusting display of greed and idolatry. It's not at all what it's called to be at all. A bat mitzvah is about that girl or boy standing before their parents who have been leading them thus far in the word of God and in prayer and whatever is parents are responsible for. And we're standing before God, before our parents, before the minister of the house and the congregation and we're acknowledging the seriousness of this relationship that we are now walking in covenant at our, because we choose it. At 12 years old, that's what we become responsible to identify yes I believe God yes God has standards and it is my intention with his strength that I would walk according to his standards that's what a bat mitzvah or a bar mitzvah is about the idolatry and grossness of my people is just beyond measure that's not for today but church transparency begins when you're willing to walk without your masks on, without your fake life showing. You see, Abraham, he was the champion of faith. He was the first to believe God and be called righteous. You know what Abraham was famous for? His hospitality, right? In seven years in walking in the body of Christ, one. And I see, I thought for a minute it was none. But I was reminded the day before yesterday, only one person in seven years. This is pre-COVID, so please don't. That's the bull crap you tell yourself now to make yourself feel better about the two years you've known me, the five years you've known me, however many years you've known me. Right. That I walked in your house. One couple invited me in and broke bread with me. See, if you don't take it back to the beginning, you're not going to understand this at all. You have to take it back to the basics. The basics are believe God. The basics are honor God. The basics are be obedient to God so that through your obedience, you will see his love for you. That's what I got for today. <laughs>